Elliot Friedman dropped some huge Habs trade news today as on the 32 Thoughts podcast, he was mentioning Pittsburgh Penguins targets and he mentions Kirby Doc is a likely name that Pittsburgh would be targeting. We got to dive into everything Friedman had to say, but it wasn't just him today, Jesse. Darren Dreger on Insider Trading said that Capo Caco of the New York Rangers, his name has now been resurfacing in trade talks. Finally, we have an article highlighting a couple of right D targets that Montreal could very well go after. So stick around for all that coming up on this episode of Habs Digest. But Jesse, we got to first say thank you to our sponsor of the video, Rentals.ca. Guys, you know Rentals. They've been supporting our national team defender their home ice and international competition. They're proud supporters of Team Canada, and they've been helping thousands of Canadians find their home ice all across the country. Whether you're living in Edmonton, whether it's Toronto, Vancouver, Montreal, Rentals.ca has you covered with their website that's just really great, really easy to use. Go and check them out because they have the best listings in your area. Their maps are super intuitive where you can find amazing listings of your choice right there it's amazing rentals.ca have been a proud supporter of us a proud supporter of team canada and if you are looking to move find your new home ice check out rentals.ca in the description down below or the pinned comment we really like their product and we hope you guys do too jesse time to get into the video and the first thing i want to do as always all these articles will be linked down below is bring up one article talking about some some trade talks as this is from last word on sports i believe and the author here kind of goes into some other defense targets outside of david Yurichek and one of the names that keeps coming up, there's two names I'll go over. The first one is Rasmus Anderson of the Calgary Flames. I'm just going to briefly go through the stats here because there's not a whole lot of depth to this. It's just some interesting names to keep an eye on. Now, Rasmus Anderson has had a 50-point season. He's coming off a 39-point season, but he's had two seasons around 50 points. He's on pace for over 40 again this year. Jesse, he's Calgary's arguably number one defenseman. Or he's definitely on that top pairing. Calgary's in better than expected. I don't see them trading for him, but how good of a fit would he be in Montreal? He would be absolutely amazing. You have to feel like the Calgary Flames, they want to hold on to this player because he's helping them a lot this season. But in an ideal world, I just find like, you know, of a right shot kind of guy, has some decent size to him. I find he just would pair really nicely with a lot of our younger guys who are very more offensively minded, even though he's got a little bit more of that in his game, just bringing a little bit of that physicality as well. At only 20 years old, it's kind of that sweet spot where like, you're not too old, but he's bringing that vet experience to this team. Like, you know, drafting is great, but I think sometimes you got to go for those players that that really fit. Like, you got to make those trades as well to kind of complement that young core. We'll see if Calgary would ever be willing to move him. And I think if they were willing, I think Kent Hughes would be on it. But the big thing with him is he's on a decent contract. Four and a half million for this year and next year. Honestly, a great deal, which is just another reason why I don't think Calgary will be moving off of him. But I know a lot of you guys like him. I know we like him. So, hey, if there's any possibility, I think this would be cool. And the other name that they mentioned in this article, that again, go link down below. I forget the author's name at the moment, but please go leave them the love that they deserve for this article. Uh, Alex Carrier of the National Predators, Quebec native. I actually got my work played against this guy in junior. Said he was a phenomenal player. He's 28 years old, and he could likely be traded at the deadlines. The Predators have had a horrendous start to the season. Now, Carrier's not a guy that's going to go out and get you a ton of points, but in 21-22, Jesse, he had 30 points in 77 games, which is not bad for a defenseman. 5'11", also 28 years old, plays a solid game. He he seems to be in control a lot of the time, and maybe some Predators fans can shed some more light on him. I think it's an interesting name, just one of those solid right-hand shot guys, though he is 5'11", maybe not that big presence we want. It's, it's an interesting veteran name that you could consider adding, I suppose. Definitely. I think the only holdback there is maybe like the 174 pounds. Just I think we want to add a little bit more size just because of, you know, Hudson and just kind of pairing well with those uh, type of smaller type guys that we have there. But, you know, an interesting name, all the same, maybe not at the top of the list, but you know that Kent Hughes is, is doing his homework right now. Absolutely. There's lots of names out there. And, uh, you know, we'll mention a couple of these guys with no substantiated rumors, but one guy that has been in Habs trade talks for a while and whose name resurfaced today is Capo Caco. And I'm going to get into what Darren Dreger said on Insider Trading. The link is down below. He said, I'm told that Capo Caco's name has resurfaced. And we all heard these Rangers trade rumors come out over the past week with Kreider and Truba likely going, but it's not just them, it's Caco too. Now, it's not like the Rangers are willing to give this guy away, but ice time is a bit of an issue. Caco probably wants a fresh start, but again, if they're trading out pieces like that, then the return is going to have to be exactly what the New York Rangers are looking for. Now, that's fair, but at this point, Jesse, what even is the return that the Rangers would be looking for? Kako has had a bit of a resurgence this year with 12 points in just 21 games. He's on pace to absolutely destroy last year's point total as he's on pace for, what, about 
50 points ish right now just under 50 points he got three goals nine assists he's only shooting 8.6 percent and we know he has a bomb of a shot so that could very well go up a solid Corsi four and a solid expected plus minus but he's only getting 13 minutes a game i know we've talked about him a lot in the past jesse but if his name is available look we, we've kind of we've kind of mentioned this are we, are we done with these reclamation projects he's starting to show some some real talent here he's still only 23 like I don't even really consider this necessarily a reclamation project. This might just have to be like a, a trade for a decent player if the price is right. Yeah, and you have to feel with a little bit more ice time that he could do a little bit better. But for me, I, I think, you know, that Ken Hughes is looking for those premium type players. Sure. And also a little bit of a lower risk. Because there are sometimes, you know, we've been taking some reclamation, but we sometimes like to think like there's no risk involved, like like a Kirby dog. But it, it really is if you're looking to kind of project to have a player at a certain spot and that's not really lining up, that really kind of tardies everything up as you're looking to really kind of eventually find the player for that sure. position. That being said, it's like, you know, with a little bit, like he's getting points without a ton of ice time. So is there an argument that he could get more with, you know, getting more ice time, which he would get in Montreal? You'd have to think he'd be looking for a team like Montreal where he could definitely get more ice time. Yes, absolutely. But I want to see Montreal really kind of turn that page of really going for a little bit more established players at this point in time. But I mean, it's not just Freed kind of dropping the bombs right now. Like, Dreger has a, has a couple right now. Like, Matheson's name is coming up a lot, Josh, right now, as you're hearing as well. And he's been saying, like, Dreger, that he believes that Evans, like, is a guy to kind of stick around for the future. So, Ken Hughes, he's kind of determining who do we want in the future. And I think he's going to go for a little bit more short shots as he looks to make his final moves here. Yeah, I think so, too, especially with the expectations of the team. Now, we are coming off a win in Columbus, but, like, this team is so up and down. Stability is, I think, what would be key for this team right now. And bringing mm -hmm. in another young face who has not had a lot of stability in their career would be a very risky play. I definitely agree with you. But I think at the end of the day, it all comes down to the price the Rangers would want. Though I think it probably would be too high for what Montreal considers reasonable for Capo Caco. But let us know your thoughts on him down below. Final guy, though, Jesse. It's time to talk about Kirby. Um, This is, we mentioned this. You mentioned this. You call this out as probably being the best target for the Penguins from the Habs. Kirby Doc. And there was an article we talked about just a few videos ago. And Friedman on 32 Thoughts Today, well, he doubled down on this. He said, well, I guess not doubled down because he didn't say it in the first place. But he's saying it now. He said, I'm sitting here thinking, okay. Who else can Pittsburgh target? Look, I'm not saying they're talking to Montreal or anything like that. I'm just saying if you're looking for guys, this is another one that maybe is worth taking a shot at. And what would he learn next to the likes of Malkin and Crosby? I can't help but wonder about Kirby Doc being that kind of a guy. Now, I can't disagree with anything he's saying there. I think if you're the Pittsburgh Penguins, Jesse, this makes a ton of sense if you can manage to go after Kirby Doc. My biggest question is not whether he could be a target for the Penguins. My question is what on earth would the Penguins give up to Montreal to, to trade for a guy like Doc? And there's been a name we've mentioned in the past, Marcus Pedersen, who's playing second pairing with uh, Eric Carlson right now. He's a six foot four left-hand shot defenseman, reasonable contract. He's just a very solid big player that I think could fit well on Montreal's decor. But like in terms mm -hmm. of young players, I mean, you look up front, yeah, it's like Crosby and Malkin, but like, in terms of young guys, they got like McGrory. They just traded for Tomasino, so he's not going to go out. That's my biggest issue here, Jesse. Not not whether Doc could be a fit, but who Pittsburgh could even send back. Are you trading Doc for McGrory? No. I Well, not well yet, geez, eh? that's tough. I don't think so. No, I don't think like not yet. Like Ken Hughes one. is going to give him a little bit more time. To kind of figure it out like and Kirby Doc doesn't have an unlimited amount of time to kind of figure it out with the Montreal Canadiens but until the end of this year and I believe that they're going to want to see that improvement but if there's not a whole lot of improvement from now to the end of the season like there it's definitely the pressure is going to be on Doc like they want to see that growth there's not just like an unlimited amount of time for him to figure out his game is they're going to give him a little bit more but the clock is starting to tick because the 2C it's, it's not like a bottom six position like you need to figure that because so much else on your team is really going to kind of be predicated needs to be built off that they're kind of going forward so obviously like McGordy's really like the only player that's really jumping out to me like on the pens that I'm super interested in, other than obviously like a Crosby a Malkin type things like there but it does make sense like if the Penguins are looking to kind of you know retool kind of on the fly that that is a player and it's interesting that they they see the potential in him as well like other teams in the NHL haven't given up on Kirby Doc they feel like maybe this isn't a bad guy to kind of bring in you get a little bit younger but that can really help because he has all the tools for me the reason you're not giving up on Kirby Doc it's the mental game right now like he has 
all the tools. And he's even shown it a little bit with the Montreal Canadiens that he he really has it. It's not like he can't play hockey. It's just about really getting that confidence. I'm not sure what else kind of needs to happen, but it's it's not his ability to play hockey. It's something kind of between the years right now. You have to feel like Martin St. Louis was able to get help Uri Slavkovsky with this. He did have a tremendous end of the season. Slav will continue to shine, continue to get better. And now it's up for Martin St. Louis. I would say like his next biggest project right now is to get Doc up and flying again. I mean, I think so too, but also like, you know, I, I, the clock definitely is taking, especially I think he has one more year after this year on his contract. I could be wrong and he'll still be an RFA after that. But like, you know, he's also coming off a knee surgery and missing a whole season, right? So, uh, you know, those kind of recovery periods, it takes time sometimes to be confident in your own knee. And we're starting to see him gain a bit more confidence game after game, pulling off some nicer dangles, picking up a bit of speed. Like, I don't think we're really going to have a good idea of what Doc is this year until we're talking probably January, February. So I do think trading him right now is far too premature because you'd be trading him at his lowest. And I just don't think that's a good idea in general when we're talking about trades. But you're very right at the same time, Jesse, is like, eventually excuses will run out. It's not just an excuse. It's like a legitimate reason why he's not playing well. Major knee surgery as a professional athlete coming off that, mm-hmm. you know, doing all your rehab, whatever. But like, we're going to have to wait and see. And at some point that time will come. I just don't think it's at least this early in the season. But what do you guys think? Let us know your thoughts down below on Friedman linking Kirby Doc to the Pittsburgh Penguins. I think there's some very interesting stuff there. But that'll do it for this episode of Habs Digest. If you enjoyed, leave a like, comment, subscribe to the channel. And please check out our sponsor, Rentals.ca, if you want to find your new home ice. I'm Josh Goss, my co-host, Jesse Poitier. We'll catch you in the next one.